Wait, what got updated? Ah, I don't know. Wakefield's a hard man, but he's not as fun as Lizzie. Lizzie enjoyed it more. Yeah, even Lizzie never drowned victims in a sack. Jesus Christ. I can still see him squirming for air. Yeah. How's he gonna top that? The mutineer Edgar Wakefield has drowned a gang member that was loyal to Lizzie and sank him in the river near the Undyne. Oh, is that suggesting I find the body and loot it or something? Put him in the trash. Oh, God, Wakefield is on board the Undine. He's put all of the eels on alert since Lizzie's rumored to have escaped from Coldridge. He's expecting her. You will undoubtedly be a surprise to him. Thank you for the report and scare the shit out of me. Notes from a Hatter spy. Mr. Hat, there's been interesting activity since our raid on the dead eels a few days ago. It looks like Wakefield has been rooting out Lizzie loyalists and chasing them off or making an example out of them with some gruesome killing. I don't think he's got much of a hold on this gang, and things are likely to fly apart before long. Also, I swear I saw a woman lurking on some nearby rooftops last night, spying on the eels. She saw me looking at her and just disappeared. Perhaps you'll know what to make of that. Oscar. Mysterious figure was seen scouting the Undyne and her crew, but they teleported away before you could investigate further. Trimble's Coin. Excerpt from a book on noteworthy intellectual figures. The halls of the Academy of Natural Philosophy are thought to be spaces where thoughtful discourse and enlightened tolerance set the tone for debate and learning. It is believed that reason applies above all, and the passions of the greatest minds of the Empire are tempered by wisdom and custom. This is the commonly accepted vision of the place, and it is almost always accurate. Almost. Sometimes a protracted debate or disagreement can explode into conflict, and very rarely, violence. Such was the case years ago in the month of winds. A young apprentice named Piero Joplin ventured into strange new directions of research and the preservation of mortifying tissue, a field that brought him into frequent conflict with a student called Trimble. Joplin and Trimble often debated loudly long into the night, and the content of these arguments was well beyond the understanding of most people of the Empire, the author included. The rivalry, rivalry between the two natural philosophers raged for months, but it is the climax of those events that prompts this writing. The two had argued deep into the night, the debate sliding into bitter personal attacks. At last, they reached a terrible accord. Their mutual hatred culminated in a duel to the death with pistols. Under the gray sky of dawn, the greatest minds of the Empire of the Isles gathered in the courtyard in a fashion resembling schoolboys gathering to watch the, the bullies fight. A quiet fell as Joplin and Trimble accepted the ceremonial pistols, marked off the paces, turned, and fired. Each combatant fired round after round, shattering windows, chipping masonry, and splitting plaster. The closest shot to the mark was Joplin's, whose bullet ripped through the hem of Trimble's overcoat. It was clear that the de dedicated study of the learned men had made for poor marksmanship. When all of their ammunition was expended, both parties stood quivering with fear and rage, but unharmed. It was then agreed that the duel would be settled with a coin flip. A newly minted coin of the Empire was produced bearing the face of Empress Jessamine Caldwin. As it was sent spinning into the air, Trimble called heads. The coin landed tails. 
Joplin was declared winner, and the feuding between the men ceased. By the terms of the dispute, Trimble is forced to leave the academy, his studies left incomplete, whereupon a dignified silence returned to the halls of the Academy of Natural Philosophy. <laughs> My god. Set on fire is worse. Drowned is worse. You ever see a man set on fire? What does he do? <laughs> he jumps in the water. Very funny. I hear Lord Shaw is making his way to the party by boat, with only two bodyguards. What? How do you hear things like that? I have some connections. close. Damage taken is reduced, but overall movement speed is reduced. Mm, no thanks. Movement speed is very important for me. sealed himself in the cargo hold of the Undine. Smuggling ships like this one often have a hatch underneath for dumping contraband if they get caught. Perhaps the Undine is no different. Possible way inside. Okay. Gotta remember, we can swim. <laughs> Not instant death. So should I just avoid all this stuff up here and just try to get in? I suppose that would be wise, wouldn't it? But also, there might be stuff, you know? Why was Tivy and Orr sitting on a bunch of fish guts? Oh. Uh. 
Back here. Besides, they couldn't stop talking about killing Dowd. And that's an enemy we don't need. Whoa, look at our weapon. You ever get that creepy feeling of being watched? I've had that a bunch lately. Funny you ask that. I had this feeling of eyes on me. I looked up on the roof of that building over there and... There was a lady up there, right? I seen her too. Just staring. Then she was... Gone. In a wink. Yeah. We've seen the same thing. Should we tell the others about it? Uh, no. The others might think we're seeing things. First sign of the plague from what I hear. I wonder who this mysterious person is. Was it Billy Alert? Could it be Delilah? I... Why would it be Delilah? I don't know. Who knows? in there. Projectile launcher. Huh. Glad I found it. That didn't work right. <laughs> I bounced off him. There wasn't room. <clears throat> Oopsie. I just won't mess with those two. I can smell you. But I think that's the entrance to all the stuff in here. What is this tackle thing that I keep seeing pop up? Like, I don't know if that's lethal or non-lethal. Let's create a new save and test it. Okay, it was left click to do it. So just hitting them does, like, stun them, but... That's it. But left click. Oh, lethal. Okay, well, now I know.
That reminds me, I should be saving more. I don't think I've saved the whole mission. Wait, how do I get in there? That stuff, how do I get in there? Oh, wait a minute. Can I get through there? Weeper warning. <clears throat> Keep clear, clear of this area. We've penned the weepers inside so they can't get out, but nobody's foolish enough to go in there and put them out of their misery. The plague will kill them off eventually. Until then, consider this area off limits. I'm really nervous about these two seeing me. I don't have any trank darts. No. Not long ago, I watched you kill an empress and steal her child for coin. For a man like that, you went through Cold Ridge Prison with an awfully soft touch. I wonder, are you hoping it will change the way things work out? Maybe. Maybe not. The song's almost over, and when the music stops, we all fall down. I don't think that's actually a thing, but just checking if I can get up there. So, back to getting in here. Ah. I don't remember how weepers work. Like, can I just go in and do a non-lethal kill or should I not touch them? I don't have any trank darts. There's not any point in being non-lethal, right? I mean, they have the plague. There's, it's just a matter of time, right? I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. I don't know. I'm going to try to choke them out. Okay, we can choke him out. Don't know if that's really 
merciful or maybe the opposite, but... How many do we have now? Ah, oh, I have five. I just need one more and I can get the next level of bend time and completely stop time. Corrupted Charms. Excerpt from an overseer's report on black market occult artifacts. The following note was found at the site of a ritual murder attached to the victim's face by nine fish hooks arranged in a suspicious pattern. We inferred that the two parties were involved in a conflict over the construction and sale of a superstitious charm using pieces from older, possibly damaged, heretical artifacts. Full investigation recommended, focused on the person named... Lalika in Circonos. Lalika, you cheat. For months I poured coin into your pockets, paying for all the things you requested. Food and lodging at the outskirts of town. Livestock with birth defects whose purpose I cannot imagine. Toxic plants and alchemical materials. The baboon blood and cartilage of deep-dwelling fish were not cheap, I assure you. But even more costly was the scrimshaw I painstakingly acquired from sailors during the past year. Carved from the bones of whales and said to hum with powers from beyond the world, these cost me half my savings. And you swore to me, swore, that you could provide me with the charm I wanted. I was quite clear. I had your word that I would be able to visit Abriella in my dreams. That I could woo her while sleeping. You promised that she would love me. Instead, you delivered to me this lump of old bones, scratched and hacked at, wired together as if made by a child. For two weeks, I kept it close to my heart, and at night when I slept, I did see Abriella. Oh yes, I saw her lying with everyone I've ever hated. Rivals and enemies who've bested me in business or in sport. Men who have bullied or insulted me, including my infernal older brother. I woke each morning clenching my teeth in shame and rage. Such terrible nosebleeds I suffered, and my hair began to fall out in clumps. I threw the cursed thing into the lake just to be rid of it. You told me you were a sorcerer. A simple charlatan, more like. But that as it may, I want you to know the day I decided to ruin your life. I will punish you for thinking me an idiot and taking my money. I could send an anonymous message, delivered to the nearest overseer outpost, but what I've got in mind is more fitting. There's a gang that operates in Karnaka. Assassins. I want you to know that all my remaining funds will be spent putting a contract on your pretty head. You will never see me again, Lilika. But when the butcher's blade falls on your neck, or when the poison in your milk takes hold, I want you to remember that this is how I repay those who cheat me. Ooh, coins! Those fish aren't gonna try to attack me, are they? I think that's a yes. I'm sorry, fish. Oh, three sleep darts. Robust. Potions give you moderately more health. That's good. Versus your max health has been slightly increased. What do I want to get rid of most? Maybe max mana?
Oh, fishies. Spiritual pool. You regenerate mana slightly faster. That's also really good. Maybe I'll use that instead of... Um... Instead of your max health has been slightly increased? Fish haven't noticed me. Yes. We are running out of oxygen. Oh! Whew. Ah. Edgar Wakefield log entry. It's going to pieces. I was just getting things under control, but now I hear Lizzie busted out of Coldridge. How? The dead eels are all starting to swing my way, and I even think we'll wipe out those accursed hatters soon. Mr. Hat humiliated me something awful with that raid to steal our engine coil, and payback was going to be me taking a piss in his stovepipe. But now that Lizzie is free again, I've got the crew on high alert. Orders to kill anyone that ain't one of us. I'm starting to think I bit off more than I can chew. Oh, that's time to signal Lizzie. That's Edgar. <laughs> I don't feel any particular need to kill Edgar. I mean, obviously they're a bad person, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just not going to kill them. I don't I don't feel strongly about them. Signal Lizzie using the ship's horn. I should probably take out everybody else before I do that. Nothing. Ah. I'm not sure where to start. That's a good start. Oh. I think they're dead. <clears throat> oh, look at 
Look at that engine, that's so cool. Lizzie Stride is assuming control of the Dead Eels now. She's ordered them to give you safe passage. Edgar Wakefield set me up to be taken by the City Watch, and you followed him, took his orders. But you know what? I forgive you, all of you. I'm filled with love. But the following people each owe me a finger. Logan, Douglas, Bang Bang, Ferris, Pigface, the Bakers, and Annabelle. Shit. Two. <laughs> From you, Annabelle. Have a good night. Suppose that's generous. Yes, I did just steal money from Lizzie, by the way. Why not? That piece of garbage, Edgar. I'm still living with his incompetence. He let the Hatters cripple the Undine. Ship seems fine to me. They took the engine coin. We're dead in the water. What is it? Can we make a new one? They don't make them anymore. Not for an engine like the Undines. We'll have to get it back. The geezer still leads the header gang, right? I'll pay him a visit. It won't be that easy. There's a snag. Always is. What's this one? The geezer's about a hundred years old by now. He's got it rigged so that if he dies, the whole place gets gassed. So they're real careful around him. Got him a nurse and everything. Maybe you can cut a deal for that engine coil. Turn on the charm. One of the Hatters gave me their door password in exchange for keeping the rest of his fingers. It's whalebone. I never got to use it on account of the gas. And being in jail. Just be ready to move when I get back. What I see Dowd do then? Just because he can do strange things. are using the textile machines to make shrouds for the plague dead. Now we know why they took the engine coil. The man who runs the Hatters is more cunning than he looks. He can flood this place with a toxic gas. In time, it'll eat through our air filters. You may have to make a deal. This is turning into a rather complicated mission. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, I guess we're gonna probably make a deal and get the engine going on the Undyne. <laughs>